The voltage regulator is designed in this uh, circuit using three BJTs and uh, bipolar junction transistors and two ideal op amps. We want to show that the output of this setup is going to be constant 15 volt, even though the supply voltage is a non-constant variable 20 to 25 volt range supply. So it's not an accurate supply voltage, but the output is a regulated 15 volt, irrespective of a reasonable range of the load that is applied at the output to be fed at the 15 volt. So it's going to apply a fixed 15 volt uh, at the load. And then as a result, it's going to uh, source the current, let's say, up to a maximum value uh, to, to this load. The question is, what is the maximum current that is supplied by this uh, regulated supply voltage or voltage supply at the 15 volt? And what happens if the output is shorted? Okay, so let's first see if we can see that, if we can prove it's 15 volt. Uh, first, make the assumption that the op amps are properly biased uh, so that they are in linear region of operation and they're not saturated, so virtual short is valid for each op amp, meaning that the voltage at positive input terminal is the same voltage at negative input terminal for each op amp. So VF is applied at positive input terminal of this op amp number one, and therefore, because of virtual short, VF or 0.7 volt appears at the negative terminal as well. Now, this uh, op amp number one is in non-inverting amplification uh, scenario, uh, which effectively says the this node X, the voltage at node X, let's say, is Vx, this node, effectively says Vx, simply a, from a voltage division between these two resistors, resistive voltage division, knowing that this node is 0.7, will give us 1 plus 92K divided by 10k times 0.7, which, if you calculate that, is uh, effectively a gain of 10.2 uh, multiplied by uh, point uh, by 0.7, which will give us uh, the voltage of about 17.14 uh, volt. Okay, 17.14 volt at Vx. Now. Uh, the nice thing is, assuming op amp 2 is also in linear region, not saturated, it's ideal op amp. The input impedance is infinite, therefore there is no current that can flow through the input terminal, therefore there is no voltage drop across 1.5k, therefore Vx appears at the positive input terminal of op amp 2 because of virtual short. Uh, as a result, this Vx of 17.14 volt appears here as well. So here we have 17.14 volt appearing here, which is exactly at this node. Now, you can see that as long as everything is properly applied, then these transistors T1, say T2, let's say T1, uh, T2, and say transistor T3, these BJTs are operating uh, properly, and therefore you can see that uh, there is a voltage division across 2.7k and 3k, and this node here is the V out. As you can see, there's a direct connection to V out. So we have effectively at this node, we have V out. And since um, when the circuit is uh, providing a supply voltage, this cap effectively is open. Uh, there is nothing going in or coming out of the input terminal of negative, the negative input terminal of op amp 2. Therefore, the, there is no uh, effective current that is flowing this way. And therefore, between 3K and 2.7K, there is just a voltage division. So knowing that this node is 7.14, or basically Vx, we can find V out. So what I'm saying is, uh, using voltage division, voltage division, uh, let's say 2.7K and 3K, we can write V out is simply uh, 3K plus 2.7K divided by 2.7K times Vx. And if we substitute for that, what we get is V out is uh, 5.7 divided by 2.7 times 17.14, which turn out to be roughly 
15 volt. So there you go. We found the output voltage of 15 volt in this circuit. Therefore, output of this voltage regulator or voltage supply is 15 volt. Now, the next move is we need to, the next move in this circuit is we need to show and figure out the maximum current. How do we do that? Okay, so let's say somehow because of uh, uh, the specific load that is applied, let's say a, a very low resistive load, there is a maximum current that is being flown, uh, that is being uh, provided or sourced to that uh, resistive load. And still at the 15 volt constant at V out, we want to see what is that maximum current. So if the output is a sta stable at 15, whatever I max is flowing is coming through the mono. Uh, it cannot go, or it, there is no substantial current that can come from uh, transistor T3 because uh, the base of that transistor has a very small current and the emitter has a very small current as well compared to what power transistor T1 can provide. This is a power transistor that bears the uh, actual current load of the circuit. Uh, so it has to be selected carefully. So this is a power transistor. It has to uh, provide the main current in the circuit. So uh, the maximum current is going through the one ohm, and therefore, as a result, it will it will result in a voltage drop. That is, let's say, because of maximum current will be um, V saturation current um, that appears across one ohm, and we can find the voltage V y here as well from that because it just uh, using KVL or Kirchhoff voltage law, we can say V y is uh, V saturation basically the voltage drop across 1 ohm plus the constant V out, which is 15. So from here, we can say it's 1 ohm times the saturation current max uh, plus 15 volt. Okay, so what we learn is simply uh, Vi is 15 plus I saturation. Okay, now um, you can see that there is a simple voltage division here between 2.7 and uh, 27k, knowing that if you want to find this voltage here, which is Vz or Vz, we see that Vy to Vz is a voltage division between 2.7 and 27k, knowing that the current IB or the current base current that is going through the transistor T3 is very, very small, negligible compared to the current that is flowing to 2.7 and 27. So I can say... Vz is simply 27k divided by 2.7k plus 27k times Vy, which uh, now we have effectively um, 10 over 11 Vy. Okay, so here is another relationship. What's the use of this? If I want to find this maximum um, current that is discussed here, the only thing I need to do is I need to observe that I need to observe that uh, the Vz that appears here minus V out that appears here should be equal to the threshold voltage at the base emitter of transistor T3 that effectively activate T3 and uh, as soon as that happens suddenly T3 turns on and it starts drawing a considerable more considerable current uh, from, from let's say 2.7 branch and therefore avoiding uh, the further increase of I max um, by forcing uh, the current uh, extraction at this point and therefore by limiting the Vy and Vz. So that's what it is happening. So we need to find that. Okay, at that maximum current, what happens is uh, Vz, so what happens is Vz, minus V out, which is equal to voltage of base emitter at the threshold of uh, T3 seriously turning on. This threshold, uh, let's say, it is a number that depends on transistor, but let's say in this case is 0 0.6 volt for the transistor T3 to turn on, to seriously turn on. Okay, so now we can substitute from, say, uh, equation um, 
let's name them equation one and two into uh, three to just uh, substitute for vz. So I'm going to do that. So here, using one and two, I can say uh, substitute for vz, 10 over 11 vy, and vy from one is one is I saturation max plus 15 minus, and V out is 15 sustained, uh, equal to 0.6. So that is the equation that I need to solve so that I figure out the only unknown, which is I saturation max. So from this, I get, um, so let me write it here. I think it's the best spot to write it here. So it would be uh, I saturation max is, <laughs> is equal to let's say uh, 11 over 10, so is equal to 11 over 10 and uh, times 15.6 minus 15. Okay, so if we compute this, let me just quickly compute it. So we get what number? We get, okay, so we get 10 over 11, uh, 11 over 10, so we get 11 over 10, I'm just quickly trying to compute this, so it is 11 over 10 times 15.6 minus 15, which give us 2.16 amp. So I saturation current max is 2.16 amp. Or ampere. Um, so that means that the circuit is designed in such a way that while sustaining 15 volt fixed voltage at the output, it can provide up to maximum 2.16 amp um, to source for whatever RL is applied there. Um, and that's the max current that the circuit will sustain. It will keep it at that volt. And uh, if you say that, okay, what happens, what happens if uh, we short the output to ground? If we uh, short, let's say, output voltage or output node to ground, basically if we um, apply a resistive load that is extremely small so that we can assume effectively it's shorting to the ground. Well, in that case, uh, it's an invalid use case, but the circuit should tolerate it. So meaning uh, we force V out it to zero, approximately, volt. So what happens if we do that? All right, so the same thing in terms of what sort of current we see. Is it going to be more than this max current, or what is, what is it exactly? So in, it will be the same thing, except that when you look at the equation, say, um, so, so what I'm trying to say is you end up still with v, the same scenario. Uh, v out is zero, so uh, the VBE, uh, in terms of saturation, VBE threshold for the transistor uh, T3 is going to be just simply uh, VZ minus the, so let me put it this way, voltage of base of transistor T3 minus voltage of emitter of transistor T3. Voltage of base is simply VZ. Voltage of emitter, because it's equal to V out, and V out is approximately zero, so become negative zero. So we are dealing with just VZ effectively. And VZ in this scenario uh, is just simply V saturation because across the bottom, because output is nearly zero. So basically it's just uh, VY times the um, 27K divided by 27K plus 2.7K. And uh, in this case, it's 1 ohm times the uh, current, the, let's say, uh, short circuit current. So let's say short current. Um, and then times, that's for VY, times, uh, let's say, uh, 10 over 11. And... Uh, that's it. We, from, from this one, we can calculate uh, what is the uh, 
i short in this circuit. So knowing that again, the threshold is equal to this value, we can just say therefore uh, 0.6 volt for the threshold for the transistor T3 to seriously turn on is equal to um, I short, output short, times uh, say 10 over 11. So from here, we get that I short is equal to 0.6 times 11, which means 6.6 uh, 6 divided by 10, which is 0 0.66 amp. So in summary, we see that the, if we short the output to ground, which is a sort of invalid use, but the circuit should tolerate it, it's not anymore functioning in terms of a supply voltage, but then the circuit is designed in such a way that the current that is going through the 1 ohm and through the power transistor T1 is going to be actually 660 milliamp, much considerably less than the maximum current that the circuit can sustain. So uh, when, let's say, I refer to it as saturation current, you can just say maximum current, that uh, effectively the circuit can provide to a load while sustaining actual 15 volt at the output of the circuit. I hope that uh, this example is helpful in terms of illustrating the use case of a voltage, uh, the application of op amps and transistors, BJTs, in, uh, in designing a voltage regulator and how it works.